everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Who Invited Her. We are San Diego's LGBTQ pop culture podcast. I am your host, Tony, and I'm here with my co-host. Say hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you guys, it's just us this week. Just it's the two of us. Lonely just old the two, of us. two of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've done a show with just us two. Never. We actually have no. not. No, we haven't. We've yeah. had a guest and and yeah. us two, but not just us two. Yeah, everybody's everybody's getting busy because of the holiday season, and a lot of the like our favorite queens are all getting booked. People are out of town. We're the yeah. only two with nothing to do. To do <laughs> nothing to do, obviously, because we have such exciting lives. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have. We've been doing things. Yeah, I was in New yeah. York for a whole week yeah. visiting my brother. And I you spent were four days in West Hollywood with your. Ex husband with my ex husband. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get it. We can that. talk about that. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about my New York trip. I saw a lot of Broadway, some amazing shows, some new shows that literally one that I saw had just. It was the second day of previews. Wow, when we saw it, and it was incredible. Um, so we're gonna talk about that. The Free Britney that's been going yeah. on. Yeah, um, new about, shows oh, we're watching. New shows we're watching and a new movie um that has ai for the first time in it like kind of directing the movie it's really interesting i read about it we're gonna get into all of that but uh first i want to start we're gonna catch up we were off for a whole week i know a whole week and i was trying to get bashy to come on today but of course he's busy that little bastard (laughs) and miss Miriam t has her show tonight she has two gigs today because she's actually she's um probably going to be coming back to the show which is going to be really i'm so excited now that her schedule is kind of freed up and she's getting a little more time but she has tea party tonight um and wine club and wine club today she's which i love so much i love wine club oh it's so if you guys haven't gone to wine club here in san diego at inside out in hillcrest it is so much fun It is really good. They bring local wineries, right, within Southern California. um, And it's like $25. Yeah. And you get like four or five pours of wine. Let's be honest. You just get drunk. Yeah. You get (laughs) drunk. And it's And they have food and stuff. Yeah. So Mo, who runs um, Gossip Girl, owns Gossip Girl on Board and Barrel, she's the one who organizes wine club. Yeah. And we had gone to the very first one, remember? Yes. And it did really well. And then now it's just, I don't know how, I think it's like the third year they're doing it. Yeah. And and Miriam hosts it. So you have this great job. You have this clown that just yells at you while you're drinking drinking wine. wine and eating cheese. (laughs) (laughs) Even though she looks like cheese and drink. (laughs) Block of cheese and trash. Don't talk about her patting that way. I know. Her cheesy thighs. (laughs) Now that makes me want cheesy fries. (laughs) She's going to kill me. She is going to kill you. Oh my God. But you guys, this, while we're recording this, this is the Saturday before Turkey Day. Thanksgiving's coming up. Ooh, that was fast. Yeah. It's just blowing by. This, yeah, this year, this Thanksgiving is going to be kind of sad for me. Oh, it is. You guys, it is my first. Thanksgiving completely alone. Literally. I, know. I have like every Thanksgiving, um, one, because I grew up Jehovah Witness, we never celebrated it until I got into my 20s. Yeah. Um, and it's always been with my family or with my partner, whoever I've been with. Um, but it's all, oh, I've never not had it with my family yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, and this is the first year that. And they're all in Arizona now. And my brother's in New York. And Manny's in and New York. Um, so, and me and Robbie aren't together anymore right. after 13 years. So, <laughs> so you get to celebrate it with me. Yeah. <laughs> you and Megan, actually, Miss yes. Megs. We're going to Miss Megs' house yes. for Turkey Day, which I was like, that'll be fun because I'm going to be all by myself. Oh, uh, we'll have, have a great, I mean, I know we're going to be drunk. And- Thanksgiving with Megan just sounds like yeah. a TV show waiting and to happen. I think we're actually going to record <laughs> our next episode on Thanksgiving. At Megan's house with Sherry, so it's gonna be a little bit of a so mess. much to be thankful yeah. for. <laughs> what do you, um, what's it called? What do you usually do for things? So I usually go to my parents out in Arizona, yeah. but um, they're just too afraid with COVID right now. So my mom's like, I, I really want to cancel. I just oh. I want to make sure everything's safe and okay. So yeah. I. It makes me sad, but I respect her wishes, and I totally get it. So, yeah. um, and I'm used to it because I've had when I lived in San Francisco, I didn't for many years go see my parents for the holidays. So, yeah. I'm used to it. I'm like, ah, eh, put a turkey lean cuisine in the microwave, <laughs> fine. Turn on the Netflix fireplace and call it a day. <laughs> the Netflix fireplace. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a video that's just a fireplace for like. 
All three hours, people? and you can simulate a fireplace in, in your house. Oh, that's right. They do that for Christmas, yeah. don't they? Well, they they actually have it all year, so you can just play it whenever you want. Oh, but, um, okay. I, I love doing that during the holidays because <laughs> I don't have a fireplace. <laughs> Aw. Yeah, this is going to be, I don't know, it's sad. For me, it's, it is. Yeah, but yeah I, I get it. As everybody who listens to the podcast knows, the last few months have been a little, like an adjustment for me, let's just say. Yeah. Um. But actually, like, New York was fun because I got to be with man, my brother, my twin brother, right. for a whole week. And we How is he doing? He's doing great. Yeah. Even though his job is stressing him out because he does work on Broadway. It's yeah. Like, yeah. He He's has got a, a great job, right? Yeah. He has a badass job. He's, like, yeah. hanging out with celebrities all day. That's so cool. I know. It was a fun trip. Okay. First, I want to know, you went to <laughs> West Hollywood this yeah. last weekend to see your ex? Yeah. Um. So he moved from San Francisco to West Hollywood. Okay. And he was like, come down, hang out with me, and let's go out. And I was like, all right. So I really knew nothing about, like, I didn't even look up where he lived or anything. So I drive there. And I'm driving through Beverly Hills, yeah. and I cross into West Hollywood like two blocks, and I'm there. And I'm like, you're on top of West everything. <laughs> yeah, he's a block and a half from the Abbey. If anybody's ever oh, been yeah. to West Hollywood, there's the pavilions there. He's like literally right behind the pavilions. Oh, nice. And um, I so I don't like West Hollywood. I've traditionally... Why? I, I grew up there in my 20s, and I always I, – I, I can say this now because, like, as I think back, I always felt like I wasn't pretty enough or good enough for – I know. No, <laughs> but now I just don't give a shit. Now, I don't give a shit about Harley. Yeah. Anymore. Now I just walk in with confidence. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about all these people like, here. you don't like me too bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with that attitude and confidence, I had the best time. <clears throat> like, I just – the Abbey was fun. Mickey's was fun. There's all these new places that opened up. Yeah. There's like Rocco's that I've never been to. Ever? Yeah, which I think is owned by Lance Bass. Oh, I think is he's it the, the owner. New, is he the new? <clears throat> yeah, on the corner. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, for, wait, I have a question. So how long were you and your ex married for? Because you were married, married, legit well, married? I mean, we are actually still legally married. <gasps> <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm looking for the right sound effect. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, what? Um, Wait, no, that's, that's, that's very not the wrong. one. Uh, keep, what? Yes, what? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that better. <laughs> the dark menacing one. one. Um, You're still legally married. Yeah, we decided that uh, getting divorced... First of all, it's very expensive to, divor to divorce. It's yeah. at least four to five thousand if you agree on everything. Like minimum, that's without fighting and mm -hmm. like without a legal battle. That's just citing paperwork. How um, much just to sign the paperwork? Four to five thousand. Oh god. Oh, yeah, god. marriage is expensive. Everyone, like, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, it's equal rights. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Wow, um, this is what we fought for. <laughs> yeah, and so we decided that we get so many financial benefits as being married. Let's just stay married. What happens when you guys get into other relationships? Then? So that's the thing. Um, whenever we decide that uh, it doesn't make sense for either one of us, mm -hmm. aka somebody meets somebody and wants to get married again yeah we will we will proceed with a divorce um did you guys hook up no at all not at all not even no. a little like no smoothie, smoothie, no 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 he almost hooked up with someone though oh, I and he's like I, go you need a leave yeah i was like wingmanning him it was oh, no, it was uh no, okay. it was a new fun experience yeah now, when was the last time you were in weho before this um almost I mean, I've been once since then, but very briefly, but probably 15 years. How, okay, going back after 15 years, has yeah. it changed? Because there's a lot of bars that aren't open anymore. Yeah. Like, um, like Blazing Saddles is closed Blazing now. Saddles is gone. Um, um, uh, I almost said Riches, but that's wrong. Um, uh, uh, rage. Rage. I knew it was an R. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a food bar. Food bar? Is it food bar? Um, I think, if I, I remember think right. food bar is closed. Yeah. Uh, Mother Load is closed, closed, which made me really sad because yeah. I, I really liked Mother Load. Mother Load yeah. Um, yeah. So those were gone, which are, which are sad. But then there's new places. There was this great place called Stash, uh -huh. um, like Mustache, uh, that was really fun. <laughs> I know, cheesy, but. What would you name a bar if you owned one? 
or a restaurant bar? Uh, I'm so bad on the spot. You know of these. what? I want a I want a bar or a restaurant bar. I would I would call it gravy, and it just specializes in different gravies depending <laughs> on what you eat. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, like it, like it just be a a whole restaurant, and the main thing is sauces. But we would call it gravy, and it's just like the outside would be like a big gravy dish, and just gravy coming down the front and like light. That would be so cool. I that sounds great. Biscuits and gravy are <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite like after bar foods to get. And then a cocktail that has gravy in it. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds, sounds awful. disgusting. <laughs> you know, it'd be kitschy. Uh, <laughs> nobody needs a cocktail that's <laughs> thick. Uh, 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 like uh, Bloody Marys are thick. You know, that's true. Some of them are. That's the one, yeah. one excuse. What other kind of bar? What, what so kind there's of bar? a restaurant. Think about that. There's a restaurant that like needs to be a gay restaurant called yeah. Rock Bottom. <laughs> and every time I see it, I'm like, why is this a straight establishment? This is so <laughs> wrong. Everybody in there, they're like, yeah, I hit Rock Bottom. bottom. That's what the theme of the restaurant should be. Just well, like, you Rock go Bottom in. is like a porn name. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like people hit rock bottom. Yeah. This is the bar you go to to feel like it's just everything in it is depressing or or more sad than you should feel. Do you know I never thought of it as hitting rock bottom? <gasps> what did you think of it as? As like a really firm ass. That's what no! I always think of. <laughs> hitting I've rock bottom? I never thought of it as Are hitting you rock fucking bottom. Kidding me? <laughs> I'm such a gay man. <laughs> you are. You are. Wait, this whole time hitting rock bottom, you didn't. Never wait, occurred to me that it's like the lowest, lowest yeah. of your life. Never occurred to me. Oh dear lord. Oh god. <laughs> if any of you have the same reaction where 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 you didn't know what rock bottom is, or like another like saying. Call us. Let yeah, us know. Let us six know. one nine eight two 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 three six nine and leave a message. Leave a message. Yeah, because I'll play it. <laughs> what other ones? You know um, what a rap reminds me of? What? I have been binge watching Modern Family lately oh. because I hadn't watched it in years, right? Yeah. And I kind of do this with different TV shows. Like I did it with Ugly Betty, Gilmore Girls, as you guys know. And so now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start from the beginning with Modern Family from season one and go through all 10 seasons. It's like, um, Bulgaria. Uh, Gloria and the the character Gloria. What's the actress's name? Oh, Sophia. Um, Sophia Vergara. Yes, she gets it wrong all the time. Like saying, yeah, that's what it reminds me. My of. favorite was the um, baby cheeses. Baby cheeses. And they were little baby, <laughs> baby cheeses instead of cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that show. That's so what good. I've been like watching while I work. Yeah. Um, like in the background or on, and it just makes me laugh. The originals were so good too. The I first episode. How like. Funny it was. Yeah. And it holds up still. I mean, it's still hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, a good how show. Funny. Rock um, bottom. So West Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Um, great time. We ran into uh Vince from Red Dress Party. Oh, that organized red dress <clears throat> party here in San Diego. Yeah. He also does it in West Hollywood. Yeah, so I, I don't know how involved he is with West Hollywood, yeah. but I, I don't know if he was help organizing it. Or or what? But uh, he invited us to go out on Sunday night, and I was not going to stay. And I decided, eh, why not why stay not? one night, one more night? He's such a nice guy. Yeah, and it was really fun. It's it's definitely much smaller than what it is in San Diego. So oh, I think they're I'm trying sure. to build it up and um, make it a bigger event there. But we had a had a great time. I actually had a lot of fun, and I think. It is very much the same. It's the same people. It's the same crowd. Yeah. It's the same everything. But uh, I think I was different, which was nice and fun. Yeah, it and changes. Yeah, like different perspective. Yeah, I have. A, I have been to WeHo ever since I was like seventeen. We would drive up there because it's yeah. only what two hours away from San Diego. Yeah. So I've gone God ever since I was in high school, sneaking into bars and stuff up there. Yeah. But the last like trip I took was one with Pride. Me and Bashy went up, and Bash got. This is the drunkest I think I've ever seen him at Blazing Saddles. Oof. Yeah, it was. Was he messy. looking through you? Pretty much. Yeah. His one good eye was looking at me, but the other one was like around the corner looking at another guy. It was like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, nope, pay attention, stand up, stay uh, on your feet. And then before that, it was Robbie and I went when uh -oh. I had ended a relationship at the time. Rob's like, we're going to West Hollywood for your birthday. We tore, I peed 
on a high high what is it a fire hydrant <laughs> in the middle of the main drag wow at like one in the morning one time wow it, me and rob were so messed i lost my phone yeah i lost my dignity <laughs> i was like putting money dear down the go-go boys pants there's a lot more <laughs> was, go-go boys in yeah. san diego oh, like yeah. even on a like sun, years ago even on a that, sunday night like yeah. for no reason there's go-go boys ev- at every bar it's very uh, oh god so very you different a, you had a good time in west hollywood i had a great time i i actually thought i could see myself living in west hollywood one really? day really and that that was a huge revelation for me like okay. i never thought i'd ever say those words out loud um, but I would have to like live there and have the similar situation where I could just walk to places, yeah. which was really nice. He lived so close, you could walk, walk. to go get lunch and walk yeah. for dinner, walk to the bar, yeah. walk home and change if you want. Speaking of walking, I was in New York for a week while stayed. In- you walk so much in New York. Yeah. I totally forgot about this. Like I was like, oh. That's right. It's all about the walking. Yeah. That's why um, you can eat whatever you want. Yeah. Because you walk everywhere. That's what happened. I was eating like a pig. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't gain any weight on this trip. Why? Because I was walking and going upstairs every single day. Yeah. But the trip was amazing. So I went for a week. Like, yeah. as you know, Eric, um, I went to, I stayed in Brooklyn with my brother because they live in Fort Greene. So I got an Airbnb in Fort Greene right above this bar called Moe's, actually, <laughs> which is a cute little bar. Um, the B- Airbnb was great. It was very close to my brother's. But the trip was, this trip was so much fun in New York. Yeah. Like, I've been there a couple times. Um, but it had been a while since I spent like actual time there. Yeah. Um, and it was just really fun. We had such a good time on this trip. Yeah. So you saw a whole bunch of, I saw so much theater because yeah. I was like, if I'm going, I'm, and you know me, I'm a huge theater nerd. Yeah. So, and my brother works on Broadway. So he was like, we're going to go see this, 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 and this, and this. Yes. So we saw a lot of theater, ate at some amazing restaurants, drank mm. at some really good bars, um, just had a good time, but the shows I saw. So we, I got there on a Saturday, and for all you theater people, you're gonna yeah, love this. So tell us the show and tell us what you thought of the show. Okay. So the first one I saw was when we got there, and I love this musical. I've seen like YouTube videos of it, and I love the music for it. And it's Waitress, which is based off of the 19. I want to say it's based off of the. 2000 movie with Carrie Russell. Carrie Russell. I love the movie. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the movie. I think it's so cute. If you I have, have no idea. Watched... I am not one of your fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get that by mistake. <laughs> Did that tag totally show? Sh- I was like, where is that coming from? <laughs> so waitress, that's the playbill. If you guys are are watching waitress, see. Um. So. I love the music for it. Yeah. It's so good. Um, it's a very kitschy show. It's like it's a very much like the movie. If you're a fan of the movie, you're gonna love it. But for this production, because it's now that Broadway's back up, things are opening up, and this is one of the shows, right? Um, so waitress it was it, booked by Jesse by Jesse Nelson and Sarah Bareilles wrote all the music. Oh. and actually Sarah Bareilles did a run in the show as the main character. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but. The reason why I wanted to see this production is Jennifer Nettles from Sugarland, oh. the lead singer from Sugarland. Yeah, she was the lead in this in the musical. Oh, very cool. Um, and I've never seen her in, like she's an amazing actress because she did the um, Harriet Tubman movie with Cynthia Erivo. Okay, and it took me halfway through the movie to realize it was her. I love when an yeah, actor I was can like, do that. That's Jennifer Nettles. I didn't even recognize her. Even as I
but the cast is really good. So she played Jenna, the lead. Let me tell you, Jennifer Needles, go watch it just while she's, if you're in New York, go watch it just for her. Her voice is amazing. Yeah. Hers, like, I didn't know she could do all that. Yeah. And her acting was incredible. Um, everybody else in the show, with the exception of Nick Zadani, D- who played, um, he played the nerdy guy. Let me see if I can find the character's name. He played Augie. The if you you probably know who he is, Nick um, Dudani. He was in Atypical. He played the friend in Atypical. Mm. Um, he he was not good. No, no, no. Every time he came on stage, I was like, "Get off!" No, you go back to TV land. <laughs> no, thank you, ma'am. No. Yeah, but everybody else in it was good. She was amazing. <laughs> I love when the production team puts thought into the show. You walk in the lobby and it smells like baked pie. Oh, Pies baking. They had yeah. it pumped in the scent. I do remember something about her baking a, yeah. like a pie. I don't remember much the, about the it's movie. It's a very cute musical. But that's cute. Yeah, it's 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 a fun show. Yeah. I really 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 enjoyed it because of Jennifer Nittles. and I had we had great seats. If you go to the ticket booth in Times Square, you the day of, you can get some amazing yeah. seats. Granted, you won't be sitting next to your friends, but yeah. It was so good. I like, don't like I you guys anyways. It's yeah. fine. And then we went and got food afterwards at some place around. I think it was, I forget the name I told you the other night. Mm-hmm. I'll think of it and tell you guys. But So I yeah. saw that one. Oh, and then we saw um, a preview of a brand new musical that's hitting Broadway. I want to say next month it opens. It is Miss Doubtfire, the musical. <laughs> Which we saw. Um, we saw the matinee on Wait, Sunday. Was it Miss Doubtfire or Mrs. Doubtfire? No, Miss Doubtfire. Oh, I know. Yeah. I was I've always said Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, I assume she I had was... been previously married. <laughs> <laughs> you stop. She was. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't no. know. Yeah. We don't know those we details. We don't know about those her. details. So it's the brand new musical version of the of the nineteen I forget when the film came Ooh. out, but it's based off the film with Robert Williams. Um they Kept all of the gags from the movie are pretty much in the musical. Some of the story changed. Um, it's a they. Uh, this is what I'll say about Miss Doubtfire. Yeah, they know their audience, which is a Midwestern family coming to New York to see a musical. Let's, that is such a weird like a man dressing up as a woman mm-hmm. to try to get back with his children. Yeah. That is for Midwesterners. Yeah. That is such a this weird storyline. And people, fans, fans of the movie will go will yes. enjoy it. Yes. Um, the music and lyrics were by Wayne and Carrie um, Kirkpatrick. And book by Kirk um, Carrie Kirkpatrick and John O. Far- Farrell, I think the name is. Yeah. Um, and it star- the guy who played Miss Doubtfire, Robert McClurry, he is freaking amazing. Yeah. The show is geared for him. Yeah. Like, he was go see the show just for him, literally. Go my, see the show. My just favorite for him. line from it was, "It was a run by fruity." T- yeah, they have that line in there. The bra gets on fire in there. Oh, that's great. all of that. Um, they changed some of the story as far as like what happens. This is what I'll say with about Miss Stelfer. It was a lot of fun. Can't remember one song from the show. Oh. Yeah. yeah, go see it for. I would say you have to go see it for Rob McClary, the guy that played Miss Doubtfire. What he did on stage and his comedic timing and his characterization, it was amazing. Yeah. I was like, you're gonna get nominated for a Tony for and this performance. That's tough to step into Robin Williams's shoes. Yeah, he that, did a I mean, great job. That takes a lot to yeah, be able the ki- to. The three stand kids out. were really good. The oldest daughter got most of the songs. Mm. Um, she was she had a great voice. Yeah, the the woman who played the wife, she was okay. 
Okay. And then the two, that's the characters they change. You know, in the movie where it's um, Fi- Firestein? Harvey Feinstein. He plays the brother. So they have a bigger part, and it's him and his partner have a whole number oh, and all nice. this stuff. Um, it's a just fun. There was some of it. I was like, I don't, I don't know why you added this song in the show. It makes no sense. Yeah. Um, but you go, how, this is the thing. I enjoyed it because it was fun, but halfway through it, I was like, is this over yet? You know what I mean? And I was waiting for just Rob McClary to Daddy come on Daddy needs stage. a cocktail. Is yeah. this over? Yeah. Um, but I would say it has potential. It was in preview, so it's not officially open yet. Okay. So who knows what the rewrites and rework, what they're going to rework. Yeah, but maybe they'll cut a song or something. Definitely has so much potential, and it's so much fun. If you're a fan of the movie, you're going to like it. Yeah. Um, then... On Wednesday, when I was there, I went and saw a show by myself, a show I've been wanting to see for such a long time, and I believe it won the to- a ton of Tonys for Best Musical and Everything in 2019, I want to say. Um, it was Hades Town. Mm. Hades Town. Lover, you were gone so long. Lover, I was long song. Think of it as my desire. Show the way the world You was guys, that one of those that closed during COVID and yeah. reopened? Okay. So, and I got to see it with the original Broadway cast oh. because they can have come back for the reopening. Cool. So, Hades Town, uh, music and lyrics written by Anis uh, Mitchell. Um, and it starred the original Broadway cast, the oh. ones that got not like Orpheus. So, it's all based off of Greek mythology about Hades okay. and Persephone, his wife, and then Orpheus and Eurydice, who, um, Eurydice and Orpheus who fall in love, and he goes down to the underworld to, to rescue her and all this stuff. And he has to create a song to bring back spring and all. It's just. It was one of the, if not the best thing I've ever seen on stage. I wonder if they were just so happy to be working again that they oh, just gave an amazing performance. The, audi- the, the other thing, the audience was in it from the minute it, it started. <laughs> but everybody in the cast was amazing. The only person that I didn't, that was in the cast, that wasn't from the original um, Broadway show was um, the woman who played per- Perficia? Per- what is that? I- I just lost the word. I don't know. Persephone? I don't know. Yeah, so the that plays the goddess of spring. Amber Gray played the original, and Manny, Sand, my brother had seen her in it and said it was amazing. I saw Lana Gordon play it. Mm-hmm. She was fucking a not phenomenal. Oh, good. Yeah, it was just, it was such a good show. And the guy that played Hermes, Andre DeShields, who is a Broadway legend, he did Play On, which originated here in San Diego at the Old Globe, and then went to Broadway. He nice. also did ain't misbehaving and i really wanted to see him play because he was nominated for tony i think he won the tony for it but he was playing the role he got nominated for he was fantastic and the guy that played hades um patrick page 
who also was in the original cast, so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and the two lead, the two leads, um, Reeve Carney and Eva no- Noble Zadi, who was in that Yellow Rose movie that did really well. Um, they both, it, they were both were fantastic. The music is so pretty for it. The staging was incredible. And I had gotten the wrong ticket for the wrong day. Like I do. <laughs> so I, when I got there, I was like, oh, shit. And it was at the um, Walter Kerr Theater. So I went up to the box office, told them what happened. They're like, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll refund it, whatever. Um, and she goes, and I, she goes, do you want a ticket for today? And I said, yeah. And she goes, you know what? I'm going to give you a great price, $100 for a really good seat. That's really... It was Orchestra Row F Center. It was like Whoa. the best seat. Whoa. <laughs> they only paid hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And That's it was nice so good. The show, like I've never gone to a show where when it ended, I thought I was gonna cry. Oh. I know. And the audience would they like the like curtain call. Yeah. lasted forever because the audience was just so in it Aww. if you ever if you get to new york and you or even the touring group of Hades Town, go watch it it's such a well done show nice it was really really cool and then we saw an off-broadway show yeah that um it was good yeah. <laughs> kimberly akibo it was called and it's based off of the play of the same name um the reason why i wanted to see this show well my brother told me about it but um, Victoria Clark, who, if you're a Broadway person, you know her from Light in the Piazza, Cinderella, um, and stuff. She played the lead. So the show is about a woman who has this um, rare condition where it's like ben- Benjamin Button, but she ages older than young. Like she's in the in the show, she's playing a teen. It's a teenager, yeah, but she actually looks like a fifty year old woman. Okay, yeah, she ages um, early. Yeah, yeah. So the story needed work. Some mm. of the music was good, but the main reason to go see it is for Bonnie Milligan. She was who was in Head Over Heels, freaking amazing. She yeah. played the aunt, so good. Yeah, it has a lot of potential. They just need to work on the book. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was good. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. was like, mm. and then the last one is the one I was so excited to see because I've always wanted to see a show at Lincoln Center. Yeah. Um, and this is a brand new musical, and we saw it the second night. Why? Of why Lincoln Center? I don't know much about Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center is like legendary. Yeah. In New York. Yeah. So many great shows have gone on there. Okay. So, and you know the when they do the honor, like the president gives the creative. The Lincoln Center Honor, it's oh, done there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, now that's yeah. where it's at. That it's makes a sense. Huge theater. Yeah. And they have an opera house in the same complex and then their main theater. So this show was um Flying Over Sunset. It's a brand, brand, brand new musical written by music by Tom Kitt, who wrote um the Tony Award winning and Pulitzer Prize Award winning musical next to normal which i love i've seen that show so many times and then james lampin wrote the book who is very well known has wrote in tons of stuff so i was super excited to see the show flying over sunset crossing hollywood and vine flying over sunset past the hollywood Riding with the top down, eyeing all the ten young men. I could have had my choice of any then. Flying on a sunset, holding such a long way down. Flying on a sunset, plunging on down. <laughs> the subject matter of the show is really weird. Yeah. It's about um it takes place in like in the 19 mid 1950s and it's the Car- Cary Grant. Okay. And Aldolf Hux- Huxley was an a very famous author and scientist who was studying um psychedelics and okay. how that helps with mental health, right? And then Claire Booth, very current even yeah, though it's the 50s. Bear, um, and Claire Booth L- Luce was an, um, a Republican 
the representative representative for Brazil and all this stuff. She was a politician. So the first part of the show is talking about their individual lives, kind yeah. of, and how their first because in real life they all had done LSD, not mm-hmm. together. But in their own, um, so it kind of shows you like their first trip, and then the show goes. It then it goes like not fiction, nonfiction, I guess you could say. Yeah, well. where it's these three characters: Cary Grant, the ambassador, Claire Booth, and the author Ald- Aldo. Um, Go to a house in Malibu and do LSD together. Wow. So the whole show is an LSD trip. Huh. Let me tell you, the music one, the opening scene, they do kind of a tap dance in a brand new, very interesting way I've never seen before. Hmm. Where me and my brother were like, that was so cool. The way they did that, that was just yeah. so cool. But the staging, the sets... The music was great. The acting, everybody in the show was amazing. Yeah. Um, Is it presented in a way where you feel like you're on LSD oh, with them? Oh, absolutely. That's fun. So it it was just so interesting. The yeah. way it handles doing psychedelics and mental health oh. and, and the benefits of doing a psychedelic and, and microdosing. Yeah. Um, and you, you're waiting for some big tragedy to happen in the show. And I'm like, I'm not, I, I don't want to give it away. Spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. The way the show ended, I was like, oh, that's exactly how an LSD or any kind of drug trip ends. It kind of, you come down. It's and the way, climatic. Yeah. 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 And the way they did it, I was like, that's exactly how it is. I'm so glad they did it realistically. Oh, that's cool. And it ends, and you walk out, mm-hmm. and I was like, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen, but also the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Let me just say, there is a scene where one of the characters is on an LSD trip and she goes to heaven to talk to her mom and daughter and her mom's missing a leg. Oh. Um, and she's, and the girl, the, the woman who's on the LSD <laughs> Is digging through a garden, and at one moment I was like, "Please let her pull out a leg. It'll be hilarious." <laughs> like five minutes later, during this big speech, she pulls out a leg. Oh, <laughs> it of was, course! I mean, I started. Me and Maddie were busting up. I was like, "This is amazing." Yeah, that sounds <laughs> but like. There a lot was of fun. like some older people in front of us. They left because they didn't get it. But I think they left. Yeah. Wow. I was like, "Are you crazy?" I can see like really hardcore theater goers being like mm, yeah but if also you go with for things open... like that if you've never yeah. tried it you don't know how to connect yeah I think or that's even had way. anything remotely close you yeah, don't know it what it's like if you guys are in new york or you go to new york <laughs> and i'm sure flying over sunset's gonna do very well yeah. go see it if you can it was a trip in a very good way yeah i thought the story and the way they handled it i'm sure they're gonna like do cuts and stuff because yeah. it was in previews um and tighten the show up but it was really good yeah and the and the main song flying over sunset is going to get stuck in your head for days it did with me and manny like afterwards that's all i could think of was the song <laughs> it just get that's like in your head that's awesome <laughs> it's so good um but yeah i watched we did all those shows i spent time in central park i got to hang out with my friend shayla who lives there in um astoria and she's working on the neil patrick show right now oh yeah yeah, yeah. it was i had <laughs> such a good trip saw so much Good theater. I love New so York. It's yeah. so beautiful. We went shopping at in Chelsea. We mm. spent time in the village. We went to Monster. Um, what day bars a, did you go to? Monster. Yeah. Um, I want to give a shout out to the bartenders. They were so sweet when we were there. Yeah. yeah. It was so. It was a very cool bar. Then we went yeah. to Pieces. And the boys, what were they like? Uh, the boys, it's very different than San Diego. I forgot how. how so? They don't. It's not as much... Um, how you look or your age doesn't okay. really play in there. They're more interested in, you know, every gay community is going to have the pocket of gays who are very like m- into uh, superficial. Yes, yeah, superficial. Yeah. You're going to find that. But I didn't find it as much in New York as in San Diego. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was interesting. They're more like, do you, are you interesting? Do you have something interesting to talk about? No, then I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Type of a thing, you know? Yeah. And you know me, I'll talk about anything. Yeah. Um, so that's what was interesting. They, my apps blew up. <laughs> when I'm in, I, they're like, knew me. 
Yeah. yeah, it was. So we went to pieces, which I really like. Saw a drag show there, mm. and <laughs> New York yeah. drag is different. Yeah, it is different. Well, this was like, like really. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, raw. Yeah, very They're, raw. Yeah, yeah. But pieces <laughs> is good. There was this little twinky. 20 some year old that could not leave Manuel Manny alone because he had a twin fetish. Oh. <laughs> and he made it very clear. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. But we had a great time. New York yeah. was great. I had Good. such a fun time. Yeah. Good. Now I'm like, do I want to move there? Hmm. Mm. We'll see. Did you make I- it to the Eagle? No, mm. no, it was not. Then you didn't have the full Oh, experience. shut up. <laughs> no, I'm waiting for that trip where you and me go oh. and we just go balls to the wall. Yeah, I'll take you the there. Clouds. Yeah. It's a, that's a whole other experience. The oh, New for York sure. Eagle. Yeah. Three stories. That's what I heard. <laughs> That'll be fun. But you guys, we're going to take a quick break um, and we will be right back. In the world of male sexual health, Getting an erection isn't always the problem, but instead premature ejaculation may be the issue. The great news is, HIMS has that covered with either a spray, a pill, or both. Formulated with lidocaine, the spray works by altering the sensitivity to the sprayed area without overly numbing. Unlike other topical products, it's absorbed by the skin without transferring to your partner. Spray to the most sensitive areas of your penis 5 to 10 minutes before game time. This spray absorbs quickly and stays local to the applied area, rather than numbing the sensation of your entire penis. Studies have shown men can last 64% longer when using the spray. HIMSS offers men access to high-quality medical products for issues all men face, but rarely take care of, and HIMSS is a trusted destination for sound medical guidance with both prescription and non-prescription solutions. Sex should be fun for all. Hims helps you enjoy this pleasure longer with a quick and easy spritz. Try Hims today. Go to whoinvitedher.net slash HIMS, that's HIMS. Hims is a one-stop shop for sexual wellness, hair loss and skin care for men. They can connect you to FDA-approved treatments backed by science. Prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require an online consultation with a medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate, all from the comfort of your own home. See website for full details and safety information. That's who invited her.net slash HIMS. everybody we're back from break do you want to tell people you're having an allergic reaction yeah to you? so i'm allergic <laughs> to bean and cheese burritos i had one last night and i How know are you allergic to a bean and cheese i burrito? think i'm allergic to the beans um i go into anaphylaxis so uh yeah. like my throat closes up and i get asthma what kind of bean burrito were you sucking <laughs> on like, eating on last night Listen, let's not bag? talk about him right was now. It too big. <laughs> <laughs> she was choking. <laughs> um, and so I was like driving. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to deal with it tomorrow hey. morning. I'm going to eat oh, that bean and cheese you burrito. Know, when I got back from New York that Saturday, when I landed, yeah. I came home, got in my car, went and got a burrito. <laughs> you can't get real good Mexican food. No, in New York. not no, no. Not San Diego style. I mean, almost like beyond the southwest area there's yeah. nothing like no. even if you go to idaho or anywhere you're screwed there's like no taco shops yeah. in new york oh poor bashy i know he oh, probably, we well. need to like fat overnight him a Do california burrito does he need it it's not like it listens <laughs> no it does he does not <laughs> he doesn't he's he doesn't even know where he is half the time uh. So you went in, you can't eat bean and cheese no, burritos anymore? No, I can't eat bean and cheese burritos, but sometimes I just was like, I'm going to like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to dive gonna in. do it. And then today I was in a hurry and I forgot to take my allergy pill because that's all I have to do is take a Zyrtec. It's gone. Yeah. I'm good. And but then you're fine. Yeah. Not today. I didn't oh, do it. Oh, God. Oh, so we were going to talk about like stuff we watched. So I wanted, since we were talking about theater stuff before we went on break. Yeah. So yesterday, Netflix released um, Tick, Tick, Boom, a new musical. Um, this musical, for people who don't know, was written by Jonathan Larson, who was the writer and composer of Rent, the musical, yes. which won, God knows, every Tony. And that was one of the musicals that changed my life. Like I remember. Yeah. 
I was in high school when it came out. I, I do like Rent. Yeah. yeah. And it won the Pulitzer Prize, all of that. And unfortunately... Yeah. Um, Great music, too. Fantastic yeah, Jonathan music. Larson never saw it because he passed away the day of the first preview Aww. of a rare heart condition. Aww. So, yeah. So he's never... He never got to see... That's heartbreaking. Rent. I know. I know. It's... Uh, but anyway, so they released Tick, Tick, Boom, which was a musical he wrote before Rent. And I've known this musical for a very long time. I remember... Way back, like after Rent, I think after Rent came out, they did a restaging in 2001 of it, and there was a cast album. Okay, and I with uh, I forget who's in the original cast album, but I had the copy of it, and I remember listening to it and loving the music. So when I heard this was coming out, I was really excited to see what they're going to do with Tick 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 Boom because it's based on um, Jonathan Larson's life and kind of what was happening. Up until he wrote Rent. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and just the struggles of being a musical theater or just a writer and a musician in New York in the early 90s, late 80s, um, especially with AIDS and how it was ravishing the gay community. Yeah. Um, and you see this in Tick, Tick, Boom because Jonathan Larson himself, his best friend was gay, and he had a lot of people within that community that passed away. Um, so the musical... On Netflix that came out yesterday on the 19th um, was directed by Lynn manuel Moran, Miranda, okay. who did Into the Into the Heights, which was just on HBO, and it's a yes. Broadway show in Hamilton, of course. Yeah, um, he directed it, and he that, actually had that this little thing called Hamilton. <laughs> a little, you know, thing not a big deal. Hamilton. <laughs> so Andrew Garfield played Jonathan Larson in the movie, the movie version of Tick Tick Boom. He did a great job. Yeah, he did a really good job, and then um, there was a lot of people in it. Vanessa Hedge Hutchins was oh. in it, and she actually did a really good job. You know, I really like her. Yeah. I know she's a very easy person to hate. and of. Yeah, but um, I think did, she's pretty she talented. She did Broadway before. She was nominated for Gigi with a revival a few yeah. years ago. I've seen her in some independent films, yeah. too, where she plays like these rough characters, yeah. and I'm like, she can act. She's she's good. Yeah. She did a good job in Tick, Tick, Boom. But yeah. the one I was really excited to see was um, Joshua Henry. He's okay. this actor singer. I remember first hearing him sing in the revival or concert version at Lincoln Center of Carousel with Jesse Mueller, who also originated the way the the role on um and rate waitress. She was the original on Broadway, okay. Jesse Mueller. So he did that carousel with her at the Lincoln Center. And that was the first time I heard him sing. And then he did, I think even before that, he did Violet which was another Broadway show, and he originated the one of the roles in that. His voice is amazing. I follow him on Instagram. He's such a like cool guy. So when I saw that he was in this, I was like, oh, that's amazing. And so then also I found out he actually right now is in rehearsals to, re to be in Waitress on Broadway oh. playing the doctor. And I was like, nice. dang it, I missed it. That would have been cool to see him. But he's um, in Tick, Tick, Boom. Well, you can and always go back. I know. <laughs> he's f fantastic in it. The, there is a scene. So Jonathan Larson pays, pays homage, or in this movie, they pay homage to a lot of Broadway legends. Um and they do a number called Sundays about Sunday brunch, mm. but it's in the style of Sondheim Sunday in the Park with George. Okay. And in, in the movie, they do the number, and there's so many broad, like Bernadette Peters makes a cameo, Cheetah oh, Rivera makes a cameo. Wow. All of you did are the original cast of Rent makes a cameo. Daphne Ruin Vega, um, Oh, the other two, the, the guy that plays Mark and the guy that plays Roger, I can't remember the names. Oh, Adam Ra. R Rappy, I think one of them. I don't remember, but yeah, they make appearances. It's really cool. Like if you're a theater nerd, you're gonna be like, oh my god, I can't believe that person's in it. This person's in it. They did a really good job with the movie. I really, really enjoyed it. That it was awesome. really cool. If you guys get a chance, check it out on Netflix. The music's great. I forgot how great the music is for that show, but it it pretty much tells the life of Jonathan Larson up until he writes Rent. Yeah, nice. it's really cool. Nice. I liked it. What did you? What have you been watching? Oh, um, so I have been binge watching this show, and I so I was recommended it, but then Hulu also recommended it too, and I was like, oh, I should watch this. And it's a show called Jan, Jan? J A N N. Okay, and I've never heard of it. Yeah, and it's so it's a Canadian TV show from yeah. CTV, 
And Jan is actually like a real folk singer. I forget what her last name is. It's like, like Al- in real Alder life. or something, Adler or something. Okay. Um, so she's very lit, much like Sarah McLaughlin, like that kind of singer. And um, the premise of the, the show is, is that she has this career. She's kind of a washed up singer. She has all these great albums from like 15 years ago yeah. that have like made tons of money. And she switches agents, and the the new agents like, we're gonna make you hip, we're gonna make you relevant, we're gonna put you in VR, we're gonna <laughs> vocord your voice, and like we're gonna do all these crazy like Gen Z Stop. things to you yeah. as TikTok this, your voice, yeah, as this fifty year old woman, yeah. and it's watching her like be so awkward and just so uncomfortable, but she's also. She's also like in her head, like a very narcissist, like any oh, celebrity, like any, yeah. any celebrity. She's also a giant narcissist. And like, <laughs> it's just watching the conflict of it all yeah. is really, really, really oh, funny. I gotta check it out. And I, I love that she plays, I don't know if she is in real life, but she plays a lesbian uh-huh. in, in the character. And, um, it's so like not a main part of the storyline. It's just, uh, it just, it's, she yeah, just happens to be. She just happens to be, and it's so well okay. done that it that that's not the main premise of it. Yeah. And I I think that's beautiful and and really awesome. But it's hilarious, and it's very simple to watch. It's very like twenty minutes, yeah, lighthearted, funny, yeah, not too intense. Um, what what's it on? Where do you? It's on Hulu. Hulu, yeah. Okay. But there's two seasons of it. Um, I, and it's really cute. Yeah. And there's moments where she goes on like a radio show and they're yeah. like, so what, what was it like to sing that don't impress me much? Like they, <laughs> they, 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 they always think she's like the wrong, wrong person. person. <laughs> That's great. It's great. really funny. So oh, I got to check in. I Jan. recommend Jan a lot. So I wanted to go back to TikTok because I looked up the cast. Yeah. There's, these are so many good people in it. So it's Andrew Garfield plays Jonathan Larson. Um, then Robin D. De Jesus, who plays Michael, Robin De Jesus was in the original, I think he was in the original cast of In the Heights, but he was also in that movie Camp, if for all of you that remember. And then, um, MJ Rodriguez is in it too. Oh, I love Yeah, she does love. a great job in it. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, she's in- oh, and Judith Light is in it, oh, I love who her. is great. I love Judith. Light. Um, there's just so many people. Oh, there's so many, so many really good people have, in it. Have you Judy seen Cohen's in it? In yeah. my Instagram, it came up, and I cannot think of the name of it, but it's where the two they're like, God, I'm so bad. Me it's too, a new, it's a new musical, but it's like they're fighting against each other, and it's it was what an old, it? and um, I can't think of her. I'm so bad with names right now. That's a really good hint. Two people fighting. I mean, come <laughs> Two on. Two groups, groups of people. people. Um, West Side Story? Yes. <laughs> I knew we'd get there if we just gave enough details. <laughs> West Side Story? They're the remaking yeah, the West Side Story. Have Steven you seen? Have you seen? It's, the trailer? And who's yeah. producing it? Somebody really? Um, is it Steven Spielberg? Steven Spielberg is directing it. And I heard yeah. that, and I'm like, that is such a weird I'm producer for a musical. I'm curious to see how they're gonna, if they're going to update it or how, if they're going to do anything to it. Yeah. And see how it reads for a younger audience yeah. that didn't grow up with that musical. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I don't know that that's one that should be redone. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to see it, and we'll talk about it on the show. Yeah. But yeah. Cinematically, it looked, I mean, I saw like 30 seconds on yeah. Instagram. It looked beautiful. Um, so it looked very and it's Steven Spielberg, expensive so to be filmed. Yeah. I'm curious I, to see what he's going to do with it. Yeah. To be and it looked like it was still 19, was 1950s. Yeah. Like it, look true to the era so we'll see yeah they don't fuck it up you know they're doing wicked the uh. movie got cast with um what's it called cynthia Riva is playing alphaba who i'm so excited for because cynthia Riva has one of the best voices i think yeah and she actually i think she's she sang the songs in the 25th anniversary i want to say or some concert she did 
do Wizard and I, and it was phenomenal. Okay. And then Ariana Grande is going to play Glinda, I which I think is this. perfect. Yes. I'm like, that is, and as, people are no, like. As long as, here, I'm going to talk shade. As long as she doesn't mumble her words so we can understand I know. what she says. So this is the thing. <laughs> she started out on Broadway in 13. Didn't she? She was in the musical 13 written by um, Robert, J., Robert Jason Brown. And that was her big first break was. On Broadway. Thank and you. Next. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next. And then, yeah, so there is this video on YouTube you can find of Ariana Grande in New York doing a concert um, at a small bar doing all the other. She does Suddenly Seymour mm. and with a bunch of other, like Sasha. Sasha. I'm going to get so much hate mail. I know you are. <laughs> you are. Oh, and I've actually seen her on SNL where she yeah, impersonates SNL. other people. She's really great at yeah. singing in the voice of other people. Well, the other thing, too, is like she, I think she's going to be good as Glinda. If you guys are watching The Voice this season with mm-hmm. her as a coach, I didn't realize how how much of a technical singer she is and how much she knows her shit about The oh. Voice and singing. And I think she's going to be great good as for Glinda. Her. I yeah. really, really do. And people forget that her and um, Christian Chanowitz, who is the original Glinda, are yeah. actually friends in real life. I didn't and know that. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, one of your friends and mentors played the original Glinda yeah. on Broadway. You, you Christian Chenoweth, I love. I like, love she can be in anything. anything and it'll it, be great. Yeah, I'm fantastic. But um, Ariana Grande has the voice to sing it. Um, I mean, she did Hairspray Live. And she was a, mm. it was cute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I like her. I think she's going to be great. Yeah, I think and I be think fun. with Cynthia Riva, who comes in and with a more than an A game, is going to push her to even do better. I think they're going to do so good together. Yeah. Yeah. It'll I really, good. really, I just hope to God, because there is a petition out there, James, George, James Gordon does not get <laughs> cast in this like he did with Prom and Cats. Everybody's yeah. like, please don't cast them as a professor. Into the Woods. He was Into in the that, woods. Yeah, He doesn't oh, need to be in this. Why is he in every He doesn't need to be musical. in this. It's okay. Yeah. There's way other more talented people who can do the role. Yeah. yeah. I don't get it. I know. I don't either. <laughs> but um, I did want to bring this up because it is important. You know what today is? It's November 20th. Do you know oh. what today is? I mean, I think you told me before the show. Stupid ass. <laughs> it's Trans Day of Remembrance and Resilience. Trans Day is today. Great. Which is great. I yeah. think, I think, I, I just, it still baffles me that we have to have like even a day for that, a day for pride and all of that when it just should be so normalized where it's like breathing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, so it is trans aware, trans re, um, remembrance day. So I was reading. This is this is an article. Let me find. Um, where is it at? Oh, there is a new. Oh, here it is. I read this article about um, a new film that's coming out. Groundbreaking okay. film. Um, it hasn't come out yet, but it's made with AI. Um, and it takes you through a trans man's first day of work. But the, the so it's directed by Jake Graff, who made history with his wife as the first British um, trans parent. Um, the film entitled Tom's Story is the first of three short films made with AI that read the emotions of the viewer and change the narrative according to the reactions of the audience. Huh. Isn't so, that interesting? So do you think there's like different versions and then it reads how you react yeah. and we'll show you what the different versions are? Yeah, I think that's... It's almost like choose your own, own adventure. adventure. The new like... But AI control. Yeah, so the movie huh. takes the viewers through the a young trans man's first day at work um, changing its course based on the viewer's reactions as seen through a camera. So that when you're watching it, like on your laptop or whatever. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I wonder if this is how all movies are going to start going. Wow. So you can go watch a movie and it's one. I think it's awesome that the first one they're doing is about a trans story. Yeah. Which is amazing. That's fantastic. And just that this is even happening. It's kind of weird. I know. Weird. It almost 
could change art for like forever. We could, we I could, can't wait to see it. Like music could be it. like that. Like yeah. just everything could. I mean, in art, music is like that already. We playlists yeah. are built by AI. So it was the it was released for Trans Awareness Week, which is all has been this whole week. Beautiful. Um. So I thought that was perfect. I cannot wait to see it when it comes out. I'm so curious. Yeah. That'll be really cool. We'll yeah. have to check it out. Oh, I know. I'm like, Ooh. I wonder what happens when you watch it with a group of people. Is it just the one person? I know. How does huh. it? How does it do it? And another um, for Trans Day of Remembrance, there is an event happening in Lowell, Massachusetts. It, I always say fuck that up. Um, That's fine. It's we an opera. It. An opera about a transgender woman coming into her, her identity. So this opera is called As One, and it's been staged over 50... There's been 50 productions of it that's happened, but they're doing Whoa. a new production where the whole cast is either trans, non-binary, or non-conforming. I love that. Yeah. Uh, everybody in the cast. I love that. And it's the first time um, that the two leads are both tran- people, trans people. I so I'm that. like telling the story of a trans person. So I'm just like, I think it's so great that they're doing it. So the first premiere of this musical called As One premiered in 2014, and there's been about over 50 productions. Um, and it's so interesting. So they have one actor playing the character of Hannah before they transition, and then another actor playing the character of Hannah after the transition. Whoa. So it's but giving... both are actually trans yes. in real life. Yes. So one wow. is a baritone. The other one is a mezzo-soprano. Oh, I love Isn't that. Isn't that crazy? That is so cool. I'm just like, I really wish I could go see it because it oh. sounds... I've never... When I stumbled upon this article, I had never heard of this show. So I started researching and I found a couple clips on YouTube. And there, you can look it up. The musical or the opera is called As One Ones. Um, check it out. I'm, I wish there was a production closer. Yeah, because it would be. I find it fascinating. Well, maybe they. Maybe it'll do so well. It'll. Yeah, continue hopefully. To... But I thought that was so cool that yeah. they're doing a, a restaging of it, but with making sure the whole cast is. Is part of the part of the community. You I know love what I mean? That. And I love trans people being able to play trans roles. Like, yeah, that's so important to yeah. just even like yeah anybody within the LGBTQ. And we've talked about this on the show, just, you know, playing those roles. Yeah. You know, those are the people who should be considered first. Yes. And if for some reason they're not good actors, yeah, <laughs> then you go another way. But it should, like, yeah. you know. And there, there's such a problem in Hollywood with that. Yeah. And it's getting a little bit better, but it's moving way too slow. Yeah. Oh, do we want to talk about Free Britney? Yeah. You go ahead. I haven't so, been following it. So later. she has been released from her conservatorship. Her prison. And, yeah. <laughs> from literally. And the the thing that like was really beautiful, but also really heartbreaking at the same time is I watched this video of hers and she kept saying, Oh, I, everyone keeps asking me the first thing that I'm gonna do. And she said, you know, it's just my life feels so different already. For the first time in 13 years, I get to have a debit card. Oh, She's like, for the first time in 13 years, I get to have the keys to my car. That keys is, to my car. That is, mm. Yeah. And mm. and she's so like happy and cute and upbeat about it. Yeah. And I watched it and I'm like, this breaks my heart. Uh, the, no, it's, it took this long. It's a fucked up system. Yeah, and uh, Fuck. so it made Poor me. Britney. It made me really happy that she has. The she ability, has a life. Yeah, <laughs> finally, she has the ability uh, to be free. How and, old is and, she now? Um, or, I think she's the same age as me. Maybe 40, 39, 40. 39, 40. Yeah, something Gosh. like that. Can you imagine going <clears throat> what? The last twenty years without a debit card, no, yeah, your, not having your own life, yeah, being a mom, raising oh, God, raising two boys it. who depressing. are now teenagers, and not even having a debit card. Oh no, that's so weird. Oh god. So, on another topic, it yeah. is going to be Thanksgiving coming up this yeah. week. So, you guys, 
I know we're probably. I'm curious to see how our Thanksgiving is going to go. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. But if you guys have crazy Thanksgiving stories for the next show, call us and leave us a message. 619 822 2369. It's just, it's a voicemail. Leave a voicemail. Let yeah. us know your crazy I mean, Thanksgiving I know stories. You're stuffing a turkey. You're sticking, you're fisting a turkey. There has to be something crazy that happens. <laughs> right? Tell us your stories. Leave us a voicemail. We'll play them on the, on the show. But you. You know what? We're going to finish the show with something we haven't done in a while. Yay! Oh, we don't have Mary and Katie to do the dance. <laughs> that's my version of Mary for doing the carol dance. Okay, what's your carol? Right? So, my carol is <laughs> turning into your parents. What? What? When you realize you've suddenly become your parents. Wait, so when did this happen? For you? Oh, it God. happened last night. I went to a Bonobo concert. Okay, let the kids. Know. And, I don't know what Bonobo. Is. Okay, so Bonobo is. That a is store? Bono- <laughs> yes, can I get a nice part pair of, it. of slacks wait, wait, there? Wait. <laughs> um, so Bonobo is a DJ. Um, it's one of the crossed events. What's a DJ? Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. And uh, crossed is like. You know the the kind of EDM scene. Yeah, There's, they have which little you concerts. And Bash, yeah, yes, gone in depth and our other friend Janika as well. Yeah. And so uh, we went to go see it last night. And on the way, we were talking about how. Do you remember how when gas was like a dollar twenty five when we started driving? We were talking about how expensive. Wait, you and our, Janika were. Yeah, we were talking oh, about our, how expensive our. Uh, I don't know our the the pad thai that we ordered this the week and just thai. and then I realized yeah. I was like, do you realize we are our parents right now? Continues so the, the story goes on. So I like take a video and I like record it and <laughs> I post it to Instagram last yeah. night and like an hour after Janika goes, do you realize you tag the clothing store Bonobos <laughs> and not. <laughs> The DJ Bonobo you in your ask. Instagram, and I'm like, I am literally my parents. I can't even do social media correctly anymore. I am officially womp, a, a, womp. an old person. You are. You're an old person. <laughs> That's my oh, Carol. My when you God. realize you turn into your parents. Yeah. Yeah. What is your Carol? Is this the sound effect? No. <laughs> no, not at all. I was looking for the sound effect for that, and now, oh, wow. Oh, I wow. got to memorize this board. I still haven't after five years. Um, my Carol, okay, so you know how I went to New York? Yes. I hate getting on the plane, and the person in front of you puts their seat back. Don't do it. Really? I'm 6'3". Don't do it. If you see me sitting behind you, don't put your lean your seat back. Shouldn't no. you just upgrade your seat so that you what don't if have some to people worry can't? about that? What if some people can't? But you can. I did. And it still happened. <laughs> and it I'm still tall, bothered you? Yeah, because I'm so tall on my knees. You're not that much taller than me. I'm 6'3". Comfort plus should have been enough for you. <laughs> That's never enough. <laughs> no, don't do it. And also, don't put your hair in front of my screen. Because you're going to get gum in that it. Is and you're going to miss some of it. Yeah. That is gross. I hate that shit. Yeah. I uh, hate... You, I, oh, no, this too. I was on the plane back from New York, yeah. and there was a guy, not in my row, but the one next to me, who took off his shoes and socks on the plane. Uh, it was disgusting. Don't do that. Uh, this isn't your home. What is yeah, wrong with you people? Don't gross. do that. You're disgusting. My my adding on to your carol is when you have a little kid behind you, and they kick your seat. Yeah, And it's like every maybe 10 minutes, so it's enough for you to relax and, then and, and think that it's gone, yeah. and then it happens again. <laughs> Ugh, I cannot stand that. <laughs> oh man, I hate like yeah. it. Just this, I I gave him the dirtiest look. I was like, yeah. "Get your goddamn shoes on. This is not your home, you pig." Didn't we talk about last <laughs> time about going to the bathroom with your socks on? Wasn't that Nina? Was just, yeah, Nina. that was Nina, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that true. freaks me out. That just that's I weird. Why would you go to an airplane bathroom with just socks? Socks on. You don't oh. know what's on that floor. Oh. People miss the toilet bowl all the time. I don't think they clean them that often no, either. No, they probably don't. They just play a little lice on go, you know what? 
why bother? This was this was a very therapeutic <laughs> airplane <laughs> carol release. <laughs> oh my god! But that you guys, that is our episode. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, you're like, oh, that okay. went by fast. It did, <laughs> and I got some therapy in. <laughs> you go, you did. <laughs> now you don't have to pay your therapist. Um, <laughs> where, how do people find you? Eric? You can find me on Instagram at Daddy Bear Eric. There you go. You can follow the show at Who Invited Her underscore podcast say dot com. Who invited her? Did you hear that? I think I just heard Claude. Oh, again? Claude, hi. Hi, Claude. We acknowledge your existence. existence. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Legit, um, guys. Seriously, something just made a noise. In the over there, room. I heard yeah. it near the door. I did, too, yeah. and I looked at you. And we're the only ones here. There's no one in this yeah. place. Um, okay, so you can follow the podcast. I do invited her underscore podcast on Instagram. We are who invited her SD on Facebook and Twitter. You can email us at the gang at who invited her dot net. Yeah, we love hearing from all. All of you, and please call, leave us a message 619 822 2369. Let us know about your Thanksgiving. Yeah, I want to hear about I want to hear some really your turkey stories. fisting. Your turkey fisting. <laughs> and you guys, the podcast is up for an award, a strut award, which is, I think, based out of Palm Springs. Yeah, I found this out this week. They are. But you can go to, I believe it is, um, I'm pulling it up right now, the strutawards.com, and you can vote for who invited her for podcast. Yeah. Best and podcast. And there's other San Diego. Yeah, there's a um, lot of. Uptown is on there. Uptown's on there. Best restaurant. Um, personality, um, Jasmine, who is on our show. Oh, I Jasmine love that. Glam. She She's up. Number one Ms. on fifth. Number is... one. Miriam T's up for Miss um for Best Strike Queen performance. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of our a lot of our podcast friends are uh, yes. up for awards too. So go to strutawards.com and you can vote for the podcast. It'll yeah. be awesome if we win. Yeah. Um I, we're up against Race Chaser. Oh. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they're breaking away. But... Wow. Yeah. What uh, an honor just to be in the same category. Yeah, I'd even I found out we were nominated yeah. just because of uh, it's just an honor being. Nominated. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, that is it for us, and we will see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.